Hey, this is Marlon from MarlonMacMedia.com and inside this video, I'm going to showcase to you what a typical DAW looks like and what are the functions and features that you typically find in pretty much all traditional DAWs. I'm gonna be using Reaper as an example in this video, but before we jump into the content, if you're completely new and you'd like to know what to use to get started with, what certain things mean in music production and just to get things going for you, I've put together a guide, a starter guide that you can download right now on my website, which runs through the typical things that you need to find out about such as equipment, software, etc. Head over to marleymacmedia.com forward slash starter guide, all one word, and you'll be able to download that free guide. Without further ado, let's just jump into the content. Hi, so we're here inside Reaper and I'm going to show you what you should typically expect in a traditional DAW. So I'm going to show you this inside Reaper and the things that I'm showing you are going to be more or less universal to uh, pretty much any traditional DAW that records in a linear fashion. So it has a timeline and records from left to right on multiple tracks. Um, the differences between um, each DAW typically would be that they have various ways in which they ac accomplish tasks. They have various features that they approach differently. And it's down to you to really research and look at what individual DAW you're using to know what features are found where. But typically you'll find these things that I'm about to go through inside um, any professional recording software or digital audio workstation for electronic music production. So we're going to start from left to right, bottom, uh, top to bottom, left to right here inside Reaper. And in the top left, what you can see here is we've got a toolbar and um, this toolbar here, um, when you hover over individual items, what you'll find is that it will pop up the um, item description. So it will tell you what each thing does. And that's pretty handy here inside Reaper. So here we have a button for uh, starting a new project. We have the one next to it for opening a new project. It also shows you the keyboard shortcut if you wish to use that. I'm on a Mac, so in this case, it's Command plus zero. We have a save button. We have a project setting button, an undo and redo button, a metronome uh, switch. It's disabled at the moment. The metronome is the click device, it's the audible click that you hear. Um, at certain regular intervals that keeps you in time with the music if you're recording. You have several other things down here that you can apply such as auto fades and um, other things for editing and to do with the um, grid layout over here, which I'll get to now. So along the top area here, you can see some numbers. What these are doing are representing the timeline from left to right in which you would record. Um, it's representing these at the moment in bars. And if you have any, any understanding of m basic music theory, I'm not so great on music theory, but a bar is four counts. So if you are counting one, two, three, four, that's a bar. And um, each time you count to uh, the fourth number, then um, you have another bar. So from this um, left hand side here to this area where it says two, that is um, one bar and another bar here and so on. So if you hear someone in music recording mention, oh, one bar, a one bar recording or a one bar loop, they're talking about um, this amount of um, space here, this amount of time um, in terms of counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's how you lay out your music typically according to the number of bars and it's represented on this grid here to give you some indication of where you are within the timeline. This line that you see me dragging across here is the marker. This is the recording head. This is where your recording would start from, depending on where it is. Typically, you'd want it to be on the extreme left to be, to be able to start from the very top. But if, say, you wanted to record something to start further along, you would position the marker or the playhead uh, in whatever position you wish for it to start from. So currently we don't have any tracks 
loaded up on this um, version or currently we don't have any tracks loaded up inside here so you cannot see um, the timeline for each track but along this blank area we would typically have tracks um, based on what you're recording and a track is simply just a, a path along which you have a signal flowing so this could be a track for your microphone where you're recording from a mic and it could be that you have an external instrument as well such as a guitar plugged in you could have a separate track for that and you could have a separate track for your drums maybe you have an audio loop you want to bring in that would be on a separate track also and um, this is why you call this a multi-track recorder because you're not just recording everything all in one it's being recorded recorded separately and i'll just create a track here by right clicking and inserting a track so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So this is one track, we can do another one here. So you can create tracks in Reaper also by just double clicking and it will drop a new track in. And as you can see, as we add tracks to this time timeline here, um, we have the corresponding tracks showing up down in this part here as well, which is the mixing section. I'll get to that in just a sec. So we would typically have the tracks set up on here and you would then need to set up which signal needs to go into the tracks. So at the moment, we don't have anything connected to these um, tracks. The way Reaper works is that each track can be for either audio or MIDI and um, you don't have separate tracks that says, OK, this is a MIDI track or this is an audio track because that's just how they work in Reaper. In other DAWs, you have you can create MIDI tracks separately and audio tracks individually, but they're not combined as they are here in Reaper. So what you need to do is usually you go into the input and decide where you want the signal to come from. So if it's going to come from a MIDI keyboard, um, you would go into MIDI, and select all channels if you've got your MIDI keyboard set up. If it's going to be a stereo um, audio signal, then you select that there from your audio interface, or it could be a mono recording as well. So that's how you turn them into a MIDI or an audio track. Typically on a track, you'd have um, a mute, a solo, and a pan which is basically how you get the signal going from left to right. If you want it to come down the middle, then you keep it central. And I'm just gonna double click to reset that. The mute is self-explanatory, it mutes that track so you don't hear anything from it. And solo basically has everything else switched off on all other tracks and you only hear this track. It also has an effect, um, an effects button here which is currently off, but you would load in your instruments, any virtual instruments that you have, or any effects just by clicking on that, and it will load up this window where you can go through all your various um, installed VSTs or AU um, plugins, or you can use the ones that Reaper comes with as well. So Reaper comes with some typical ones that you would need, such as delay effects, um, equalizers. Um, it comes with reverb and so on. So I'll go through those in a separate video at some other point. We're not going to load anything on these tracks right now because this is beyond, that is beyond the scope of this video, but we'll be just showing you, I'll be just showing you what exactly to expect when you open up Reaper and where to find things. So I'm just clicking and hitting the delete button to get rid of these extra tracks here. I'll just leave one for now. Down here in the middle, we have the transport bar. This is the bar that essentially has the playback and record, um, master record button. So as you can see, you have um, the stop, play, pause, and you can just click on them to. Um, get them going. These can also be mapped to a MIDI keyboard or an audio uh, or a MIDI interface which has the same controls. You can 
control in front from an external device, but typically you can just click on screen and start them. This is the master record um, button. What this does is, is it will trigger a recording on any track that is armed for recording. And a track is armed, if I just create another track here, a track is armed when you have the individual recording button on that track switched on. So at the moment you can see there's one here and there's one here on this track. So if this is switched on, you can see my signal coming through as I speak into the mic on this particular track. So if I now hit the record button down here, it will start recording my voice as you can see there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the stop button, which I can also do by hitting the space bar on my keyboard. This button here is the repeat toggle or the loop button. Essentially, if you have an area selected with markers on screen, let's say I have this portion here selected and I hit the loop button or the toggle repeat button, what will happen is that As you can see, it's just re recording, uh, sorry, uh, playing back that portion that I have selected there. But if I was to switch this off, it would play past that, uh, that marker there. And that's what that does. You have some um, additional functionalities um, here that we won't get into right now, as I'm just giving you the basic overview so you can have a good understanding of what to um, look for. So the same uh, features that you find on the tracks here, you will find down here repeated as well, because all this is is the mixing board section. So if you um, have seen a studio before, a physical studio, there's typically a very large mixing board in the middle of everything with faders and so on. And this is what this is representing. You can see as I talk into the microphone, there's a signal here that is telling me how loud or how low my microphone is. You would have one on every track, depending on what signal is coming through that track. And if I were to press the mute, it would not actually record anything up here or play back anything up there. If I was to solo it here, the same thing would happen. Everything else would mute. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch off the um, arm recording there because I do not want that track to be armed. Um, and recording anything else. Uh, the uh, mixing area is typically where you would balance your sounds and so on, but you can also control um, things up here as well. You have the volume control. Instead of it being a, vader, a fader, it is actually a turn dial. So um, this one here to the left is the master track. This is where everything gets rooted into. So depending on how many tracks you have here, everything is going to be played back or um, routed through this master channel. And um, essentially, if this is switched off, then you wouldn't hear anything coming from any track because every track is basically connected to this. You can control the master volume here for everything. You wouldn't necessarily um, do that here unless you are doing some sort of uh, master fade in and fade out of your track. But um, we can get into more details in other videos on how these work as we go through and um, as I go through and show you projects. So typically everything that you will find on screen here um, is right clickable. So if I right click on screen, it gives me a bunch more options. It depends on what you click on. So in this case, I, click on, I clicked on this audio clip here and there's a bunch of things I can do with it. Um, with the, the track or with the actual clip. Um, I can copy the item here. So that's Command C on my keyboard and I can come over here and just right click and say paste and it will just paste it there. I'm gonna click on it and delete it. Um, I haven't got the delete. Okay, remove items, there we go. So I can go ahead and remove it and it's gone, or I could just hit delete on my keyboard after I've highlighted it like so. Uh, if you click on the tracks, you have a different set of uh, things that you can do with the track and uh, so on. Up here inside the menu section, 
Um, this is where you find all the typical things that you don't have and you want to get access to within the menus. So for example, in this menu, what you can do is go to new project, um, start a new project, you can open a project, you can save and so on. All these shortcuts that you saw there, you have the access to um, those same things inside this menu and more. You can do your copy and paste in here as well. In the edit menu, um, you have other things that you can enable and disable. Say I didn't want to see the mixer, for example, on screen. I could just click that and remove the tick and the mixer disappears and it's been, been replaced by this um, browser, file browser. I want to see the mixer, so I'll put it back on screen. And if you wanted to enable anything else, that's where you would um, select them here as well. If at any point you need additional help with Repart, they do have um, the help documents section. It's actually online, um, which is really helpful. They have some really good documentation there so you can search for what you need. And typically there'll be something within their documentation or you could just Google it. And um, most likely there'll be some piece of content that helps you to figure out that particular thing that you need to do inside Repar. So that's it. Um, that's what I wanted to show you with an overview of this DAW and what you would typically find in most DAWs. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.